In this video, we're going to look at enthalpy and enthalpy changes. So an enthalpy is a similar concept to what we talked about in the previous video about heat transfers in Q. The only thing that distinguishes an enthalpy from Q, or a regular heat transfer, is that, this is that enthalpy is a heat flow that takes place at a constant pressure. Now in chemistry, it turns out that most reactions take place at a constant pressure. Uh, the reason for this is because we run most reactions under atmospheric pressure or under some other conditions where, generally speaking, the pressure is not really changing. So for example, if when you ran your metathesis reactions um, and you did, you added vinegar to baking soda, you did that in air and the air pressure is not really changing from the beginning of the reaction to the end of the reaction. It's pretty much a constant. So for the most part, heat transfers in chemical reactions take place at a constant pressure. So for the most part, we can define these as enthalpy. Now, the important thing about enthalpy is that it's a state function. For those of you who don't know what a state function is, I kind of refer you back to high school physics. So if you remember the, distance, the, the, the difference between displacement and distance, that would be a good example of a state function, something that's a state function versus something that's not a state function. So if you were to walk a very circuitous path, kind of going all around your house, um, and you were to wind up exactly where you started, the distance would be the entire path that you took through the house. So it, you could have walked upstairs, downstairs, all those meters of, of walking that you did are, is the distance that you traveled. In terms of displacement, displacement is very different. Displacement only cares about where you started and where you finished. So if you walked all the way through your house and you came back to the very same spot, your displacement would be zero, even though you had some significant amount of distance traveled. So that is the same thing with enthalpy. Enthalpy is a state function, so it only matters where you finish and where you start. And in a chemical reaction, so we can define delta H is equal to H final minus H initial. So because most chemical reactions go from reactants to products, we start with the reactants, this is our initial, and we end with our products. So really, the way you can think of this is, this is equal to the H of the products minus the enthalpy of the reactants. And it doesn't matter what route the reaction goes through. The reaction go, can go through many mechanistic steps, meaning it can, you know, if you have some kind of thing that's breaking down, it can break down over several steps. What all that matters is the difference in energy between the products and the reactants. That's what we're going to see when it comes to enthalpy. The thing that we want to point out is that this is an extensive property. And this is actually going to be very important for our stoichiometry. And if we remember back to density versus uh, mass, density is an intensive property. It, it's intrinsic to the material. It doesn't matter how much you have. Enthalpy is an extensive property, so this is quantity dependent. Basically, the more reactants you have, the more heat is transferred. So uh, th this quantity of enthalpy depends on how much you how many react how much reactants c you consume, and how much products you make. The more reactants you consume, the more heat you're going to transfer in whichever direction, either toward the material or away from the material. Part of this video, we're going to look at what we call enthalpy diagrams, and we have two cases. We have the exothermic case, and we have the endothermic case. So we understand from our previous um, diagrams that in the exothermic case, energy is being given off from system to surroundings. So there are a couple of things that we can write down. So energy is released. And when we say released, we mean released from the system. And so if energy is released, the delta H, we said, is equal to the products minus the reactants. So let's think about this in terms of a sign. So if energy is released, then that means that the enthalpy of the reactants must be greater than the enthalpy of the products. Now, how do I know that? Well, think about it this way. 
if energy is coming out of a system, that must mean that we're starting at a higher energy, something that's up here. Or, and when I say energy, I mean enthalpy, meaning a higher heat energy stored. And when it's done, we've released energy, so our products have to be lower in energy because due to conservation of energy, if that energy is released, then the products have to be lower because they can't just gain energy from nowhere. It, it has to be relative to, to where you started. So, so um, the products have to be lower in energy. So we know that H of the reactants is, must be greater than H of the products. So if that is the case, then if we take the products being a lower number and minus the reactants being a higher number, then this is gonna have to give us a negative value. So delta H is going to be a negative for this. And that is a manifestation of the fact that energy is released. And so heat, trans is heat is transferred from the system to the surroundings. So now let's look at an example. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to uh, write this over here so that we have enough space. So let's look at an example where we have H2H2 plus O2 gives 2H2O. And delta H for this reaction is equal to minus 483.6 kilojoules. So if we wanted to construct a diagram that shows this, on the x-axis we can put what we call reaction progress. And on the uh, y-axis we can put enthalpy. And so reaction progress is increasing in, in the right-hand direction and enthalpy is increasing in the vertical direction. So reaction progress simply means how far along in the reaction are you? Are you at reactants or are you at products? And then enthalpy is the measurement of the heat that's stored in the material. So in this case, we know that the H of the reactants is greater than the H of the products. So we can write our 2H2 plus O2 up here. Those are our reactants. And we can write our 2H2O down here. Those are our products. And so the energy difference is we're going down in energy. So therefore, 483.6 kilojoules are released, or we have minus 483.6 kilojoules. So those reactants are sitting up 483.6 kilojoules higher than the products. So overall, but relative between these two points, we've lost 483.6 kilojoules. So that's what that delta H means when we write a delta H associated with a reaction. That's the energy difference between those products and the reactants. And when it's minus, it's being given off because we're going from a high energy to a low energy in the, in the reaction. Now let's look, at the, let's look at an endothermic reaction. And basically everything with an endothermic is opposite. So with an endothermic, for example, we could have calcium carbonate goes to um, calcium oxide plus carbon dioxide. And so you have to heat this one up to get it to go. And the reason why I know that I have to heat it is because I have to give it energy. So if you remember, with an endothermic, the heat transfer in this case is going to be, uh, so the delta H is going to be a positive. And that must mean, if so if it's a positive, then, and delta H is equal to the H of the products minus the H of the reactants, if heat's being gained, then that means that the H of the products must be greater than the H of the reactants. That's the only way that we could get a positive value for delta H. So in this case, heat, the heat transfer is from the surroundings to the system. So if we were to draw out this enthalpy diagram, where we have reaction progress and H, in this case, our reactants are gonna be lower in energy than our products. So we have our calcium carbonate down here, and we have our calcium oxide plus our CO2 up here. And the enthalpy change, delta H, for this reaction is gonna be a positive value, and it's gonna be the difference between the starting, the reactants where we start, and the products where we end. So when we write delta H is equal to a positive, it means that this reaction is going to absorb that amount of energy and um, it's going to be the, the number that's included. I actually, I don't have the number for this, but whatever the number would be is the difference in energy between the reactants and the products. So this gives you an idea of what enthalpy is 
uh, and then once we understand what enthalpy is, then we can define enthalpy in terms of endothermic and exothermic. So this delta H of the products of the H of the products minus the H of the reactants, we can figure out based on the energy transfer of the systems to the surroundings versus the surroundings to the system, we can figure out where the products sit relative to the reactants. So you should get comfortable with reading these diagrams and understanding that depending on the position of the products and reactants, what whether it's exothermic or endothermic, and then what the value of the delta H and the sine is, uh, and what the sine are, those are two pieces of information that we can then understand in terms of the difference in energy between those products and those reactants.